Once around Alberio, one of the prettiest stars to look at through a telescope in the night sky. It's located in the constellation of Cygnus. It's actually the beak of Cygnus the Swan. And it's designated Beta. The second brightest star should be designated Beta. And this isn't because the Gamma and Delta stars are certainly brighter than it. So I'm not quite sure why it managed to pick up the Beta designation. It's only a magnitude three star, fairly modest, actually, especially by comparison to Alpha Cygni Deneb, which is very bright indeed. Um, and we say that this is about 400 light years away from us, but we'll look at that in more detail. But first, here's a view that you get through a telescope. It's an amazing color contrast double star. What you see as a single star turns out to be two, even with a modest telescope or a pair of binoculars, because the angular separation between the two components is about 35 arc seconds, really wide indeed. And what's most striking is the color. One of them is orange and the other one is blue. And the contrast between those is just amazing. The uh, orange star is the brighter of the pair, and that always puzzled me for a while because I always thought blue stars were powerful and hot and brighter, um, but we'll see why that is also as we go further into this subject. But first of all, the question really is, is it a true double star, or are these simply orbiting separately around the galaxy and just happen to be in the correct line of sight? Well, first of all, with them being 400 light years away and at the distance that uh, that corresponds to in terms of the angular separation, the orbit would be at least 100,000 years in duration. And that's really rather difficult over human timescales to be able to notice. So it could just be a coincidence. It could be a line of sight prob problem. We have that here. This is the Hyades cluster in Taurus. And the blue and white stars that you can see there making up that V shape, the shape that corresponds to the face of Taurus the bull, are part of the Hyades star cluster, uh, about 600 light years away. Whereas the bright white with a slight hint of orange tinge to its star, that's Aldebaran, not part of the cluster at all. It's in the foreground. It's only 46 light years away, so over 10 times nearer. So these line of sight things are quite difficult to interpret sometimes. So what we have to do is use methods to measure the distance, in particular, the idea of parallax. And we can do that I mean, from the ground, but we can also do it with satellites. And the Hipparchos satellite was dedicated to the task and told us that the A star was 434 plus or minus 20 light years away. And the B star, a little bit nearer, 401 plus or minus 13. So somewhat different, and therefore perhaps just a line of sight effect. Um, more recently, the Gaia satellites had a go and tends to produce better answers. Some of the answers from Hipparchos were not entirely reliable. But Gaia has had a problem with this one as well. And the figures that we have suggest somewhere between 330 and 390 light years, a bit lower than Hipparchos, and that's actually fairly common. Hipparchos seemed to slightly overestimate things. But uh, that widespread of 60 light years really doesn't help us try and identify whether the distances are different or not. So what do we know about the individual stars? Well, Alberio A, the orange star, is a K-type, temperature 4,383 degrees Kelvin, but it's 60 times the diameter of the sun. So this is a giant star, and in fact, it's uh, over five times the sun's mass. This means that it's a bright giant. It started life on the main sequence, converting hydrogen to helium in the core by nuclear fusion. When the core became depleted, and it had to uh, move the hydrogen fusion out into a shell over an inert helium core. It became a red giant for a while, but eventually that core got hot enough and dense enough that it was able to trigger 
helium to carbon fusion and become a more efficient, hotter overall powerhouse again. And so that's the phase that it's in now, becoming rather brighter than a typical red giant. And we estimate the age to be around 100 million years. Again, we'll have a uh, come back to that in a moment. That's important. Now, Alberio A also seems to have some companions. And the first attempt at uh, proving that it was a double star came from the fact that the spectrum of light seemed to show evidence that it was moving backwards and forwards, changing its radial velocity, and therefore probably in orbit round a nearby companion. And I don't mean Alberio B, I mean something much closer. And these observations were made back in the 19th century through to the early part of the 20th century when it was listed in the Henry Draper catalogue um, with two separate uh, catalogue numbers, 183912 and 913 for the A star and its little companion, as yet unseen, but detected nevertheless. And in 1978, the technique of speckle interferometry was being developed and used and claimed to have resolved a separate companion, this Alberio AB, just 0.125 arc seconds from the primary. No wonder it couldn't be spotted by ordinary techniques. But I'm afraid there's still doubt about whether or not these detections were real. What we have been able to show is that there is Alberio AC with an orbit of a couple of hundred years going around the primary. And this is a 2.7 solar mass star, three times the diameter on the main sequence, burning away brightly at 10,000 degrees Kelvin. Uh, so quite a, a powerful star in its own right. There's even evidence that there's an AD component which is a small red dwarf, very small indeed, 8.5% of the mass of the sun is about as small as a proper star can be in an orbit going around in just 371 days, so much closer than Alberio AC. Now, if we look at Alberio B, the one we can easily see, the blue one, this is also quite a big star, 3.7 times the mass of the sun, 2.6 times the diameter and very hot, 13,200 Kelvin on the surface and spinning very rapidly. So rapidly, in fact, that we classify this as a BE type star. And that tends to go with the fact that it has a detached shell of gas, possibly because that incredible speed of rotation is throwing material off at the equator, as shown in the illustration there. Um, and there's some evidence that this is, as well is a double star, but that's not been proven yet either. So that would be Alberio BB if it was proven. Well, trying to know whether or not the distance of Alberio B is the same as Alberio A hasn't really worked for us in terms of proving if the two are actually in orbit. So what other clues might, might we look at? Well, if we look at the evolutionary track on the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, which would show where stars would be on the main sequence on that diagonal line down the middle, a five solar mass star would be uh, roughly slightly above center there where it says the Q of sequence. In fact, that would be about five solar masses. And then two solar masses, well, that's about where Sirius is. And then you can see the sun marked a little bit lower down there. So these are the sort of positions that those masses of 5.2, 3.7 and 2.7 for the properly identified stars are concerned. But with those masses, they will evolve along their evolutionary tracks at different rates. The most massive stars will evolve most quickly because lives uh, giant stars, big stars, massive stars live fast and die young. They burn their fuel, even though they have more fuel, they burn it so prodigiously that their lifetimes are shorter. And you can see the lifetimes illustrated along in green on the diagram there. And so 
if we look at the actual tracks that we think these stars have taken, and I've overlaid that here, it's a little hard to read, but the top squiggly line, that's the, uh, the A star, starting at about 5.2 solar masses, it will have evolved off the main sequence and moved over up into the tip of the red giant star group and then get downwards and become brighter again uh, as it uh, moves into this bright giant phase through the helium fusion kicking off in the core. The B star, the middle squiggly line, is just beginning to evolve off the main sequence, hasn't really headed off over up to the top right into the giant branch at all. And the A st C star at just uh, two and a bit solar masses, that's still firmly on the main sequence, turning hydrogen to helium in its core. Um, if we look at the, the consequences of that, it means it's consistent with all three of them having an age of about 100 million years. A 5.2 solar mass star of age 100 million years would be expected to have ceased hydrogen fusion in the core long ago, headed off up, become a giant star, and then kicked off helium fusion, just as we've observed. The middleweight star, well, that would just be on the cusp of running out of hydrogen in the core at 100 million years, and the lesser one would be still burning away merrily as a white star. So it looks like they were all born together at the same time, and that means it probably is a triple star system, or even a multiple star system if some of the others turn out to be true. Speaking of which, we have found about 10 more companion stars in the line of sight. Now, some are probably just optical line of sight effect stars, but some do seem to be at the right distance and moving in the right direction with the same radial velocity approximately towards us, in fact. Uh, so the whole group is coming towards the solar system. And this suggests that this is the remains of a 100 million year old star cluster, in fact, and that all of these were born together. So it seems to solve the uh, origin and the evolution of all of these fascinating stars of the Albireo co-moving group. And as I said, they are coming towards us. We can tell from their overall Doppler shift and the radial velocity measurements that they're heading our way. It's not going to be a collision, but in the future, the Albireo star system will become the brightest star in the sky. You just have to wait about four million years for that to happen. So uh, sadly, we won't see it. Anyway, I'll just leave you here with this very, very lovely image of Albireo against the night sky. If you get the chance to look at it through a telescope, please do. It's absolutely gorgeous. So thanks very much for listening, and I'll stop it there.